Welcome to Corona Fits from Blackstone, the center of the world, but then you too are the center of the world. You like this? This, this is a, uh, a, well, a spray sock <laughs> for painting. And uh, I could stick, up, stick a uh, handkerchief in here to make it a little more thicker, but isn't that neat? This talk is uh, Corona money laundering. <laughs> So uh, we have a, a friend staying with us, and he was uh, posted this, but he is, uh, where's my glasses? Um, oh, there I can see you. Uh, and he was uh, ironing his money. <laughs> and then I was reading the John Hopkins report on the uh, virus, which was very interesting because uh, uh, the virus is not a living organism, so you can't kill it with antibiotics. Uh, it's a protein molecule that is uh, encased in a little protected by fat so that the molecule will stay on surfaces uh, for a certain amount of time depending on the surface. And it'll stay on porous material and fabric, which I assume would be money, uh, for up to three hours. So my friend was ironing the money. <laughs> Kills it, you see. Heat and alcohol and... Uh, but the worst thing it sticks on is uh, stainless steel and plastic with doorknobs, you know, and uh, now that's where it can stay for uh, some time. And so um, that's the way getting transmitted so much. Uh, and um, anyway, so this uh, title of this was uh, uh, Corona Money Laundering. And what struck me is the uh, change in our boundaries that Corona is creating, a change in our uh, assumption of space. And, and uh, it's really challenging all of our assumptions of what's real and who we are and the way we relate to the world. And this is basically uh, uh, Buddhism. <laughs> uh, uh, the the, the, the um, uh, Buddhism is a question, basically, particularly Zen Buddhism. It's a question. It's, uh, it's called the great doubt or the great question. So it's always asking what, what's real here? And what, what is, uh, what, what's real is what we assume is real. And, and so we really are, our reality is, is defined by uh, spatial relationships. So we have three cats here. Um, we have two, uh, Khaki and <coughs> Gizmo, and uh, my daughter brought her cat, uh, so we had two males and a female, and so we have a lot of <coughs> going on, uh, because there's a rearrangement of spaces. Uh, the cats have their space, and when a new intruder comes in, it breaks up their spatial territories, their, their assumptions, and uh, are challenged, and so they have to rearrange, so they've been going through a rearranging of spatial relationships so that uh, the three cats can have their own spaces together. And people in, in our homes are doing that. Um, in other words, we're all, uh, ho we're all a home arrest now. <laughs> you know, we don't, while we don't have to wear leg bracelets, although it might get to that if everybody has a leg bracelet, so if you go outside, uh, the police will come and make you go back in. <laughs> But, but so we're all on home or house arrest, and it gets kind of cramped uh, because our our normal normal marriage spatial territories are uh, the men's space is outside and the woman's space is inside. Uh, you know that's traditional. The man takes care of the yard, and he barbecues in the backyard, and he goes out in the world to work. But inside the house, then. Uh, uh, but the wife is in charge of where stuff goes and what, anyway, that's traditional. But uh, what I mean is, even our assumption that, that my body, that I am this body, and that I am enclosed in this skin. You know, and that, that's our basic assumption of space, this is who I am. And um, that, that is being challenged. Um, Americans are, are big space people. Uh, you, you, when you look at European communities, 
There's a lot of open space, but the towns are all living in, packed up in each other like blocks, you know. But here, everybody's got this big yard around the house. So we kind of like have this space around us, you know, yard, or you get a house, you got to have a big yard. Uh, of course, then you got to spend half your week cutting it uh, and buying lawnmowers. But uh, that's an American idea of space. Uh, it goes with our history. Wide open spaces. If it gets crowded in the city, you go west. As far as you can see, open space. Ah, you know, so we stake out our spacious territories, you see. Uh, in the cities, you're all kind of like this, this. So there's different ideas of space. Asians uh, have a different w idea of space. Uh, um, in, in people that are packed into cities and everything. But anyway, this corona is challenging our assumptions. So rather than, rather than be uh, panicky and frightened and, uh, and, and uh, <clears throat> despairing and uh, complaining, why me, God, why did this have to happen, and who's to blame, who's to blame? Uh, rather than getting into that dysfunctional thinking, we should approach this with... Uh, the curiosity. Uh, it, well, isn't this interesting? How, how, how now I've got to wash my hands. <laughs> well, now I have to watch uh, when I touch this uh, public uh, door or doors. You know, with stainless steel plates on them. You know, you push it on there and then go like this. Ooh. So we have to become mindful of that. So it's not something bad. It's a spiritual practice. It's, it's basically, we're all becoming Buddhists. We're all becoming mindful of our assumptions and our, our assumed definitions of reality. You see, there are no boundaries in, real, in nature. There are no assumptions in nature. There are no beliefs in nature. Uh, everything is interconnected. Everything is one interconnected whole all working together and changing as the conditions change. So now Corona comes, you see, to radically change our conditions. And so that radically challenges our assumptions of what's real, because we just assume reality. Reality is more like a conventional assumption by a society. Reality, the world that we believe is real, is basically a collective agreement on what's real. Of course, right now, uh, Trump has challenged uh, our assumptions of what's real because he will uh, define what's real, fake, and what's not, you see. And so we're kind of like challenged right there in a corona way <laughs> to question, well, what is real? Is Trump real or is, or is the... Uh, CNN real, you know, what's real? And so then the internet will come up and offer three or four more alternate realities. So we've, we're confronted with a multiple of realities. No wonder we're going crazy. So it's up to us individually to question what's real and to, and to weed out all the assumptions that we've believed in. And so it's really quite interesting about how this is changing our spatial relationships, our identity with our body, what, what I'm doing with my hands, what I'm doing with my, my uh, behaviors, uh, and also in family relationships, how the spatial relationship is changing now that everybody's at home and uh, it creates conflict and we're all kind of like cats going, <laughs> you know, get out of my space. <laughs> you see, so... So if cats can learn to live together, I assume we can. But anyway, look at this corona as a uh, spiritual practice. Look at it as a, an awakening to what's real and discovering what we thought was real and is no longer real. You see, because uh, we just assume reality, basically. And so when we assume reality, we're afraid of change because it will ch we don't want to give up our assumptions and our fixed places. You know, we're all, when you're in an assumed reality, you feel fixed and certain and your tomorrow is assured and next year is assured. We want to have future assurance.
that tomorrow, next year, and maybe 10 years or 20 years or what, we'll still be here just like now. You see, but suddenly, Corona comes. Corona comes and changes everything and challenges us and breaks up the old and breaks up the ice and lets the water of creativity and life flow. So creativity and life is flowing through the cracks in the ice of our assumptions. Look at it that way. Then it becomes exciting and it becomes a creative and, you, and there's a laughter bubbles up. I saw my friend ironing his money. I just broke out laughing. I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in and I'll see you tomorrow.